Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of the Lone Coat Mafia podcast. It is I, the Reverend Godfather, the show's main host and frontman, and this week I'm bringing you a very special episode because with me this week is a guest. This is a guest episode that came, he wanted to come on, talk about various things, uh, and that is Randy from Geek World Order. And we had a wonderful hour, close to two hour conversation the other night. And I just would like for all of you to crank up your volume once the call starts, the Skype call starts, because this is nothing against Randy at all. It's the, just that the mic that he was using probably wasn't the best mic and with all the tools available to me that I have for this program I tried to boost his audio the best I could and it still came in a little faint for the most part there are times you can hear him just right and just fine on medium volume and there are other times it just sounds like uh, there's dead air it might be the case that you the volume just dropped uh, in reference to his mic. This is not against Nan, uh, Randy uh, or Geek World Order, just that I'm blaming technology and Skype on this because of how Skype tends to, oh, I think this person's coming in very loud, so I'm just going to lower the mic and... The difference between like what my, uh, Randy uses and what me and Big Candy uses, uh, both of us tend to use, me and Big Candy both have condenser mics. We have uh, decent, on the, maybe on the low end, they're not the best mics, condenser mics, but we have decent mics that we Skype with. Randy has a probably an off-the-shelf mic, which is, is we're not, again, we're not bl- bl- blaming Randy, he's a wonderful, ge- he was a wonderful guest, and we, I tried my best to boost it any more, boosting his audio any more would have made the audio on his end sound really, really bad, I spent a good amount of hours trying to adjust it to make sure it was just right, and the quality you're going to get is that quality. I do apologize, Randy. I tried my best. Um, This is his call. This is his chance to shine. So please bear with us. And once I put off to the call, turn up the volume best you could, best you can, and please enjoy the show. And here is that call. So time to turn up that volume, everyone. And here is Randy. All right, folks, welcome. I have a special treat for you, and for those of you uh, living in the upper northwest, uh, not northwest, northeast part of the country, all of you doing in West Virginia, Virginia, and Maryland. You know, only us up here with all that rain have get the joke, and the Florida people going, you fucking pussies, it rains every goddamn day. Uh, <laughs> you, these are jokes, people. Randy, laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Florida people, yeah, Florida people know it rains every five minutes. We don't give a shit. Oh, uh, roads wash out again. <laughs> it's, it's, rained like couple, it's like rained on and off like six times today. Right, precisely. <laughs> and folks, uh, we have a special guest with us today, out uh, straight from the great and wonderful website. I can't give this person enough credit and enough shout outs to do this man justice and what he has attempted to do for the show and he has done for the show uh his name is randy he is behind the website geekworldorder.com or geekworldordersite.com is that right randy that is correct and greetings from the internet <laughs> and i have to oh, i don't know if you're going to yell at him i'll yell at him i'll get his uh his anger up in arms i you know what i saw recently that's down and not up on the internet anymore Oh, that's, I... that's, I read that somewhere, dot com. It's gone. Hmm. So I gotta yell at, I gotta yell at Dobbs about that. Damn it, Dobbs. Damn it, Dobbs, it's all your fault. Uh, he's not listening, so we could talk about him then, so. <laughs> but, what, for the, uh, for those out there, um, promote your, promote your website, promote, what's, uh, Geek World Order, 
all about? Tell us a little bit about it. Geek World Order is geeks uniting. Whether you love Star Trek, Star Wars, comic books, regular books, movies. We try to find something for everyone. Because it's really about getting great geeky content out there. You know, whether it be cosplay, nerdy music, all that stuff. I try to find out what the best is in the nerd world and bring it to you. And the thing is, not only do you run this 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 site, this wonderful site that, um, yes, folks, I'm plugging the site. It's not because he, uh, Randy has promoted the show numerous times in the past, and we are grateful for it. We bow down to him for it. Uh, even though we have at, have not asked him, he has actually a couple of times uh, reblogged some of the stuff I have put up uh, without my me really asking and he has done so and I am grateful for that too and while you have the I have you as a captive audience Randy it it's I won't say because of you um, I want to say geek world order is part of my resume in a way because of what you have done I want to thank you for that and the reason why I say that is because one of my friends when I was looking for work said you were reblogged a couple of times, correct? And I said, yes. And they said, use that as kind of a, a ref, overall reference, like a secondary reference. That way, if a job requires kind of a, a reporting type of deal, that you have to write reports, it is a way of showing your writing skills without it being on, quote, unquote, Facebook or a social media site. So I wish to thank you for that. Uh, didn't really help me get a job, but it, it's there as a reference, and I do thank you. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and that's kind of the whole mentality of Geek World Order, because it's really back to that old school word of mouth, spreading, <laughs> spreading the word, because, you know, obviously in this day and age of social media, it, it sort of reflects the gra- that grassroots movement of here's content, share it. That's how we build each other up, because there's a lot of these groups in costume communities, various nerddoms that seem to be at war with each other, they're tearing each other down, people are saying this, that, but I I never got the point of it. It's like, you know, okay, cool, you like, I like Star Trek, you like Star Wars, why can't we just be like, hey, geeky stuff is awesome, and try to work towards a common goal of promotion. You know, I mean, I get it. If you don't like something, fine. Just don't talk about it. You know, but in the end, the goal is to make everyone aware of great nerdy content. That's kind of the whole goal of Geek World Order. In, and that's just the mentality of the site is to raise awareness in the nerd community. Be like, hey, here's something you, cool you might want to check out. Yeah, and uh, not only do you run this wonderful site, uh, you are a cosplayer as well, are you not? Ah, yes, I have definitely been venturing more into that. Um, back in, uh, it was either December or January, I actually got, um, oh, what is the word, approved, um, membered into a group called The Finest, a GFO costume club. And they're actually a national organization. They do a lot of charity work. Um, I know one of their members does, I know there's some, I think there's actually some garrisons up near your end. Um, yeah, uh, we're it, familiar with... Uh, uh, Joe Colton, I'm butchering her name. Uh, she's one of the uh, girls of the finest that does a lot of charity work up on this end, and so, and we've had her on the show and her her friends. I think Maggie might have been one of them. Joe, if you're listening, please correct us. Uh, but I know she right now she's busy with a lot of personal stuff that I won't get in on the air because I don't know what she, how much and what she wants out on the air. Because it is personal, so. Oh yeah, and they do a lot of great charity work. I know the um, the Florida unit um, task force twenty seven. I know the charity they've been promoting for is um. Oh, it's like. Oh, I forget the name of it, but I know it's a a program where the money helps train animal like dogs that were in shelters to get them set up with veterans. Yeah, I think the one up here did something similar too with uh, do- uh, dogs paired up with veterans and a few other things too I've, 
they might change it this year. I haven't heard anything through um, at least when Joe starts doing the promotion. I usually see it, and if I get a chance to snag one of the links, I usually share it throughout just in case. Oh, yeah, that's going to be cool. I'm actually going to be uh, doing some tripping with them. Uh, they got a photo shoot set up at Megacon this weekend. Really excited for that because I've actually got two new G.I. Joe characters I'm doing this weekend. I actually just finished up a uh, costume of the uh, G.I. Joe sniper, Lowlight. Got that costume done. Going to be actually wearing that to our photo shoot on Saturday, which, of course, I'll be doing as the uh, as photographer and cosplayer. So... Doing a little bit from both ends. So you're going to be there as press this year? No, I did not get a press pass. Ah, uh, it, it, it sucks, don't it? <laughs> I know. It, Mega Con's like that con, but, but I got to go to either way. Right. So I already got it set up. I'm going to be there the whole weekend. Uh, Mega Con was actually my first con back in 2005. You can't. You know, that was your first official big time con, or that was my first con at all. Wow! So that's the yeah. one that broke your chariot. Yeah, I was actually in a group. It was my freshman year of college. I was actually in a group, a sci fi and fantasy group, and you know we'd hang out between classes. They had an office in the student area, and one day, one of the groups, like one of the you know the leader of the group, was like, "Hey, we're getting discount tickets to MegaCon." I'm like, let's make a con. You know, they told me about it. I'm like, oh, cool. So, yeah, I went and had a great time. And let's see, this is going to be number 14. Yeah, Megacon number 14, I think, for me. All in a row. I haven't missed a Megacon since I started going. Uh, one of these days, um, I'll have to make the pilgrimage down to Megacon. I hear it's a wonderful con. It came um, highly promoted from you, Slacker and the Man. Dobbs, and plus it came highly recommended from the promoters who do uh, the Virginia Comic Con, Baltimore Comic Con, and Heroes Con, because the, those three promoters were doing a conventioneering panel many years ago at the Virginia Comic Con, talking about their end of things, and they're the ones that say, oh, you got to go to Megacon, we know the person behind. I think this was before... They got, Megacon got sold? Uh, yeah, they got bought out by, I believe it was Fan Expo after 2015. Um, but yeah, I know the original people that ran it, oh, what was the name? I believe her name was, uh, it was like Christian, I think. Yeah, something like that. Uh, they were awesome people. Yeah. Well, no, we're not knocking Megacon at, uh, in the least, but it, some have said it's like a busy show and, um, it is. It is definitely one of the biggest cons in the southeast. I think it is. I think at this point it is the biggest. I don't, it, it either neck and neck or just recently passed Dragon Con's numbers in attendance. Well, it, it. I know some of the shows that are up this way. There are some that I could believe it, and there are some that some that say, "Hey, we're hitting like Dragon Con numbers," and I'd be like. No way in hell. No way in hell. And yeah, I'm sure. I, I don't want to say anything yet because I just put in a for a press pass again this year for Otacon, and I don't want to speak any. I don't want to jinx it by speaking ill will. But uh, for the folks at home and to Randy, this is how. Uh, for those of you who have listened for the past couple of months and knew about and listened to our open letter to Awesome Con that we kind of ranted and raved about. Um, Randy, this is uh, Otacon's press pat. You know how a lot of shows have their guidelines for someone applying for press, right? Yeah, in, in uh, Otacon, that's uh, up there, like in the Maryland area, right? Right, they moved from Baltimore to D.C. Okay, yeah, I think I've heard it's like I, I know people that actually go to that con fairly regularly. And uh, last year, they were the ones that made, I want to say made, that extended our the olive branch to us. I will say that because for many years, me, my co-host, Badmouth Otacon, 
let every chance we got, even when we first started this show, we kind of gave them a hearty ribbing and kind of like, oh, we didn't, want, we don't want to go to them. They're, you know, they had bad press. They treated us like crap in the past, back in 2006. And all of a sudden, last year, we put in at for just playing shits and giggles. We put, I put in for a press pass, and they went, yeah, you could be a member of press pass this year for us. I went, wait, what? You do realize we've been bad mouthing you for a better part of a year and a half, right? And you know, like, they pretty much extended that olive branch. They're like, come on, we've changed. And I was, ex- you know, I was impressed. It was my first big-time convention covering it. And I think I reached out to you that time. I was like, all right, <laughs> what do I do? Uh, because of you had that experience more than I have. And even though I've covered smaller cons prior, and it's a, diff- it's a different animal. Right, no, definitely. Really, when I go to any con... I still try to enjoy it. I still try to immerse myself into it. Because obviously, when I'm taking my photos, or if I do end up writing something afterwards, you know, I want to be able to draw on that, you know. So I try, you know, so if I do have, you know, shoots or anything scheduled, I'll try to make sure I take care of all those. But I do try to take in the sights, the sounds, kind of right. what am I hearing? Because obviously, if I'm going to write about the experience, what did I experience? Right. But for the folks at home, like I said, I'm going to reference that uh, when we went to or applied for AwesomeCon, it was, like, very restrictive, very... It, they didn't... Unlike Baltimore and, and Phil, uh, Wizard World, where they were kind of open to the fact that they were a little bit restrictive reference to having um, high numbers and uh, different Google analytics yet AwesomeCon didn't really have uh, it just said okay all is welcome but we're going to allow the bigger people in the Nerdists, the uh, CNNs, the bigger, you know the Fox Newses and you know the local affiliates in but we're not going to let the little people in because you, you're, you're the little people but uh, Autocon says this is their qualifications to get a press pass through them. Uh, they say qualifications for press may include but not but are not limited to uh, one organization as a news slash press outlet must have existed for at least two years. Okay. Be able to provide link to traffic stats page if requested. Mm-hmm. Uh, individual personal blogs and or galleries, uh, cosplay photographers, etc will not be considered except in special cases, uh, which is, seems to be uh, standard across the board. Right. Uh, students yep. from high school or college are encouraged to apply. However, we do request a letter uh, on official school letterhead from your editor or school supervisor slash advisor to outline the intent of the application, which is nice that they're welcoming to for students to come in and try to learn how to cover an event. Mm-hmm. And the, the last one that they have up is, again, pretty standard across the board, is if you received a press pass from us last year, and they say they include, and there was no coverage of Otacon, you will automatically be declined, but because you had one last year does not mean you you are guaranteed one this year. Yeah, well, that standard. does sound pretty standard. And for me, it's like, okay, if they... And the application was pretty much standard to uh, provide links of um, your qualifications plus what you did, what you covered last year, if anything, uh, which I did. And there was a box saying, what do you plan to, you know, what other selling points do you plan on doing this year? And I pretty much said, well, last year you were our first major convention that we covered. Therefore, we did not know what to expect. We didn't know, we knew not, we went knowing some things, but not everything. And this year that, if we're accepted, we plan on doing the whole nine yards. Uh, Video, putting stuff to our YouTube channel. Uh, Photos, which will be put on all social media. The whole nine yards, getting interviews. uh, The whole kit and caboodle. So, that's why I'm planning this year, if we are accepted, it I'm going to look like the weirdest looking (laughs) 
uh, son of a bitch who's running a podcast, you know, could ever do. And I don't care if they give me flack for it or not. And it's like, hey, I'm doing this one man, one person. I got to be everything. So heck with you. <laughs> heck with you. And it's not going to be towards Otacon because when I – there are some uh, – Otacon kind of does it, but I'm not sure about other shows. Uh, so – uh, feel free to back me up or tell me different in reference to, like, Megacon or any other local stuff. But Otacon had, like, a little bit of a press green room, if you can understand that. It was just a, a little place where, the pr- you know, if you got a press pass, you could sit down, relax, have a cup of coffee, and maybe jot down notes and get an idea of what to do when you leave or that night. And just a lot of the folks that were there were very stuck up and snobbish. You know, the I think the only time I've ever seen like a press green room like that was um, Star Wars Celebration, which was actually the first con I ever got a press pass for. Um, the one they were here for in uh, 2012, I believe it was down here in Florida. So it's like Celebration Four, I think. And then and then I got pressed for the one they did last year. Which, that's crazy, because I was like, it was when I initially thought, put it in, like, oh, this is like celebration, this is like a huge thing. Oh, I'll never get that one. It, <laughs> it was literally the first, get this. <laughs> it was the first one I ever got approved for, for a press pass. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> and, and you're like, do they realize what they're doing? I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, right. a, I'm a little bit out of my league here, but hell, I'll I'll give up my get what I got. So, yeah, no, I mean I've definitely seen all sorts of different levels. Um, I've had different access to some events. Um, I know there's been nerdy music events down here, like the Orlando Nerd Fest. Um, I had different access because um, that show, um, actually the, the the couple they've done so far, I was actually one of the staff photographers. So I wasn't actually just shooting the event as press. I was actually shooting it as the main photographer. And I bet that was like, oh, there's no pressure here. <laughs> Where's oh. this sweat coming from? Uh, that was such an awesome one. Because I know the first one in uh, 2014, it was like, you know, um, it was actually headlined by the legend Nobu Uematsu. It just happened to work that when the, all the dates were just aligned right, he was already in the U.S. It, it, the show date was, like, right between some other things he had to do. So popping down to Florida real quick wasn't a problem for him. And, you know, I'm literally, like, just a couple feet away from him as he's, like, playing these just iconic songs that he does and these video game tracks that he's known for. And... You know, I'm like three feet away from him. But also meeting him was amazing because he's just a super nice guy. I mean, as part of you wants to geek out, and there's another part of you that's kind of arguing that aspect of don't geek out, be a professional. Don't geek out, be a professional. Ugh, no pressure. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And it's one of those things that I... It's kind of hard to, for those out there, it's kind of hard to explain when. I think I might have said it a couple times on the show. When I first did my very first panel, this was uh, going on three years ago. The show was like three months old, four months old officially. And it was that November, and we were covering our first small local convention ever. It was something that I didn't expect to be done. It just lucked into it. And I, from then on, I've known that, promo- that promoter, and we've kind of got each other's back, which is always a good thing. But he was like, well, we need somebody to kind of uh, be the host behind this panel. Guess what? You're going to be the host of this panel. And it was kind of a panel discussion and with uh, Rochelle Davis from Crow. And I'm like, oh my god, uh, I there's a fan base that's really strong with Crow. It's like 
not knowing about Transformers or Star Trek or Star Wars and having to do such a panel. And we're like, wow, what do I do? And I walked into that. It was like, no pressure. Go with it. Roll with it. And when I walked out, it was like being in an accident. Hmm. I was shaking. I, it just coming off that that adrenaline high. And my, my co-host, my buddy was in the back. He said, I was ready just to shout out something just to break out the tension. <laughs> and because he... We were close friends, we're close friends, good friends, and he would have said, he said, if anything, I would have said uh, something, uh, something stupid, just for me to come back with that, you know, response, go home, dad, you're drunk, you know, and just to kind of get my mind off things, and, but every, the whole thing went well with her, and I was like, oh, thank God, thank God, and he said, uh, what were you, what were you thinking prior to it, and I was like, I was thinking the whole lose yourself theme from Eminem, you know, from 8 Mile. <laughs> and that ever, ever, ever since then, pre-panel, every panel that uh, Matt Burns has put us through, put me through, it's like, oh, yeah, you're front-running, you're, you're hosting this panel. What am I doing? I have my earbuds in, I'm listening to the song, I'm getting, getting into that groove. It's been kind of a tradition. So, yeah, I think I've only, yeah, I've only ever done two panels in my whole time of doing conventions. Uh, the first one, uh, I forget where. Oh, it was, I think I was at one of the uh, the away mission events, which are primarily Star Trek themed, but they were kind of wanting to have some other content as well. And they say, like, you know, oh, you know, one of the guys like, you know, hey, we know, you know, what are some of your topics? You know, like, you know, hey, I, you know, I know about Transformers, this and this, and. They, Oh, hey, you know, you want to put together a Transformers panel and talk for a little bit about that? You know, they just wanted to have a variety of panels. They had a few empty slots, and they just wanted to put a few, just to, you know, break it up a little bit. So that was interesting. I I hate public speaking. <laughs> and then the other one I did, I wasn't originally scheduled for it, but it was kind of a thing where I was at a small con up in uh, Coco, which is about... Uh, about midway between where I live in Brevard County and Orwell. So I live about an hour away from Orlando where Megacon is. and So not too far. There's a lot of stuff very central to my to my area. Um, it was a, the panel was, a, was a, a cosplayer kind of talking about they were doing some of their social media stuff and things they do. Well, their photographer was supposed to be there with them. And then they were kind of bringing some points up. I kind of re- responded with a few things, and then kind of as they kept mentioning all the photography stuff, they kind of kept looking at me, and eventually they just kind of pulled me up to the table for like the back half of the panel, just to kind of talk with us about some of the stuff from the, the photographer side of it. You know what I found funny, Randy? It's that I've done panels, I do this with through Skype and with on a one-on-one basis or with several people, quote-unquote, in the studio. But the day I actually had to do public speaking, I froze. (laughs) It's like, how is this possible? Why was I so damn scared? It's like, I do podcasting, I've done panels in front of people. (laughs) And here I am shaking like a leaf, like I've never done this before. I think it's the whole anticipation uh, it, I mean, thing because you know, I just had a job interview at my at, at my current company for for a different position, which I actually got, but I only had about ten minutes of warning for it. Like I, because I work a mid shift, so I got in at like you know about one o'clock, and maybe like one fifteen, they're like. Hey, I've got an opening at one thirty. Do you want to go ahead and do this interview today? So yeah, I had about ten minutes to get ready. So I think I just flew through the whole thing on adrenaline. Or I I think it's because I didn't have all that time to think about it and psych myself out of it. I think that's kind of what helped I think that's why that, that panel I did kind of discussing photography stuff kinda of went I actually thought that one went really well. 
as compared to the one I had to prepare for. Because, yeah, I, I definitely overthink things. I'm a little more analytical. So I am prone to uh, psyching myself out. You, you still there? I just wanted to make sure, because as we both know, Skype can be very finicky and very uh, problematic. <laughs> um, if not, we could blame the weather as usual. So, <laughs> I said, it, for me, it wasn't a fact of uh, being psyched out or, or psyched out in regards to that type of public speaking. I guess both you and I handle the stress a little bit differently. I'm used to kind of hitting that ground running that, okay, here's a change. What do I need to do? And just roll with it. And it's like tonight, for instance, my co-host pretty much said, I, I'm, not, I'm not blaming him at all. He's got a family. And he's, he's perfectly well in his rights to spend a lot of time with his family and his kids, his kid. And I was like, damn it, all right, got to hit the ground running back. It, and I'm, that's why I'm happy to have you on. You're like, oh, I'll come on. I've never been on. It's been a while. So, again, I'm happy to have you on, Randy, more than happy. Yeah, I don't so. think I've done a podcast in a couple of years. I think the last time I did was um, at, um, I think it was a guest. It was a, it was a guest spot on Slacker and the Man when they did um, one of the last, the, the last celebration here before their the last Star Wars celebration before the show kind of went on hiatus. If I... What I should do is I should boot up my old computer that I might have a couple of episodes on and just, if I'm out out of an episode or don't want to post an electric eye, toss up a slacker in the man to see who notices. <laughs> I'll probably be called out just by either you and or Dobbs and that that's it. And or probably by a few people. Like, why'd you post up this random slacker on the man episode? Uh, see who notices it. But I mean, I might do that, but then be like, all right, I'm gonna listen to this first, though. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, if Do- Dobbs oh, and or time to time. The thing is, if Dobbs or the man actually did listen, they'd be like, oh, that's. They won't call me out, but they'll think it's funny because they probably would realize I did it f- for the lols and to see who notices. So that's it. <laughs> and it'll be something like a really, really random. Yeah, get like a really old episode, even before Dobbs, with like the OG slacker. Oh, if I so had one of those uh, episodes available, oh dear God, it would be so funny. <laughs> it would be. I, I would have to contact the man and say, hey, do you have anything from the old days? I want to do something for just playing f- for the lulls. Maybe something for April Fools or something like that. Well, just, just, you know, shits and giggles and see what happens. Just to see. I, it, it might work. <laughs> oh, man. It I, might I'm work. Sure, though. It really, like, you know, the man and everyone. Because, really, when you get into this con scene and the geek scenes, you, you meet a lot of great people, and you really make some good friends. Right. And it's why I, I think I enjoyed this year's, last year's Otacon a lot more, uh, because the, the fan base that went last year was way different than when I went initially went back in 06. It was like night and day, literally. Because when I went in 06, it wasn't, the fandom that was there wasn't welcoming at all. And as a filthy casual for anime, as I am, it was, you know, there was no no welcoming fan base there. And this time around, it was complete like, hey, welcome, you know. And like, all right, what do you cosplay as? Well, I'm this. And it was so engaging, so the attitude was different. It was so, so much more. That was like one of the hardest markets I had getting press passes initially for. It's like smaller anime cons. I don't know why. It just, for some reason, I just had a, a good string of denials for a while. And then I think eventually I got um, 
AFO, which is a convention down here in Florida, Anime Festival Orlando. Um, Because at the time, I actually knew one of the people who was backstage, kind of helped with with their panels. So they said, you know, they threw in a good word, so their press person, you know, approved my application. And I've had a great relationship with that show ever since. It's like me with Matt. Matt is a budding promoter. He switch he from what my co host has told me, Matt, if you're listening, please feel free to write me and correct me on this. He started out promoting uh, music acts like local bands and getting them into uh, the club scene and gigs around the area the local area. And he went from there to see about going from doing that to conventions, geek conventions. And that's how I kind of, when he took over a convention that was going to be starting up here in this area, and I was in talks with them, everything switched over to him, and just getting getting in that way, and was like, okay, obviously I did a good job several times that we've become working friends, and it's always been so great, and it's like, we're kind of building each other up a little bit and having that working relationship and it's a great thing to to me it's a great thing you know it's just you're there at the beginning and if both of you work you know get bigger and bigger and you've gotten huge over the years uh and it's something it's something and with what matt has done i've i'm able to test out a lot of great stuff at his level and at the smaller level that good chance I'm able to do on the bigger level. Oh, yeah. And it's kind of funny that you mention the music industry. Um, Because I feel that's kind of where I learned some different things because, of course, I know the band Sci-Fi. And one of my good buddies there in the band is Sonny, their bass player, who actually, he has a lot of knowledge in the music industry. He's actually a trained musician. So I've actually learned a lot about from him about kind of doing behind the scenes and kind of getting yourself into places that I felt actually kind of helped me kind of build the reputation and do better at getting press credentials and things like that. Yeah, that that's why... I'll like Matt, he's having an event that we, the sh- this show will be a part of come September. Uh, he's doing a punk rock flea market, and that's literally like down the street from me. And it's like $35 a table, so I'm going to be set up having some fun. And he's going to have a bunch of bands there. So it, it's going to be, I'm going to try to do my best and get some band inter- interviews, and it's like going to be content for hopefully a week or two, depending on how things fall. And it, folks at home, when things fall through, you guys will know more as much as I do. So, and plus we'll be set up at his uh, fall, winter, uh, four state event once things fall through. So, stay tuned. <laughs> Out there, that's uh, our announcements on our, our, our end and... Plus, we'll have our June event at the local library, as much as they don't like us. They're going to hate us more come this weekend. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, uh, if you've been listening, the library does. The library board does not like us. <laughs> does not like me at all. But, and one of the things I'm going to be doing at our table at their pop culture show is having a sign on our table saying, we're the most hated podcast in Martinsburg, change our mind. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, so and sometimes all you got to do is just start doing crazy things, just throw crazy ideas out there. And sometimes it just boils down to just ask what you, ask what you can do somewhere. I mean, what's the worst thing they can do is tell you no? The reason, uh, as I've told people and folks who've listened for a while, know that, um, my beef with the library and some of the local governmental groups in town has started way before. Uh, the library started when I was doing the show in 
recording at the library and there was a change of management so to speak and that's when the hate <laughs> started there but when it comes to the local government and it was just before the show started and they don't they know who I am and now they know what I do in regards to this and it's just a matter of me not really hijacking but hijacking some of their events in regards to hey I'm here and I'm not going away so therefore I have the, the local government hating me the paper hating me the radio station hating me because they all know each other so therefore they don't touch me they won't come anywhere near me and part of me is loving it so no I mean I guess the I'm bigger here. I get the bigger I get they can't ignore me for too much longer I mean it's always good man it's, it's only bad when they don't say anything but you know, whenever oh, they, they won't. They won't. They just won't come near me. They, they're like that relative that will cross the street to, just to avoid you. That's what they're doing to me. Mm -hmm. It's my tinfoil hat theory. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got a lot of them at this show, and we love each and every hat. Oh, yeah. I've, I've seen them before. I've, I've had a few people throw some shade at me. I'll just be like, oh, hey, look at this. Oh, Oh, hey, here's that little piece of nice press. Must be doing something right if somebody's noticing me. Right. It, it It's that, and it gives uh, me as a... Uh, I think I had to post something under the show's name that was throwing shade at our local paper uh, because they... It was front page news. Not the bottom half. Top half. Front page. And... It was covering a a serial podcast, it was, meaning story based podcast, out of one of the nearby towns, and it was this big. It had f a photo, a top, full top half of the page, and it went on page two as well. I was like, "Oh, you cocksuckers!" So I was like, "Fuck this shit!" I got pulled out my phone and I left a, like a two paragraph. Thing it's like I've been in this town for three years, oh, close to three years. And you guys are avoiding me. Like, who do they know that you know? This whole big thing's like you're gonna toss shade like that on me. I'm gonna toss it right back. And I use the show's account. I'm like, bring it, bring it. I'm here. So that's me. I'm willing to do stuff and get out that type of intention. And I do everything low budget low budget and people hate it mm -hmm. and I know that it's like I've had people on some forums tell me it's like okay you can do this this and this I'm like you do realize if I tried that or able to get that it will cost me about 10 grand I'm like it doesn't cost oh yeah I've spoken to uh, the local magazines they won't feature me unless I pay them 10 grand yeah no advertising is not cheap no it's not advertising it's not. A, I had one local, one local uh, magazine tell me that they'll feature me, but I have to pay them six grand. Oh. <laughs> but, but they said we'll feature you for six grand. But that feature also might include a couple of months advertising space in that too. Like, wait, what? Uh, Say what? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's what six grand gets you. It's not like what. Now, that's the thing. That magazine, that little local magazine, is six grand. If I had the th half that, which is about three grand, exactly three grand, it costs less than three grand for the local theater to be advertised in the local theater. If I had that type of cash for a year. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I know all about the money thing. Right, and it's like, oh, I can't do that, but I'll, I'll keep it low-key. I'd totally sponsor a convention or something if I had money. Right, and if if I have 50 bucks and it's a $50 sponsorship, I'll, I'll do it. That's why sometimes I'm happy to be a part of what... Uh, 
Matt does and with his stuff and getting, you know, word out and getting in touch with other shows and so forth and so on. I know there's another... I sent out an email today to one show that might be starting up in the area. Uh, it's a paranormal show, a uh, convention about, you know, ghost hunting and, uh, you know, tarot card reading. like, you know what? I'll put in for it. See what the hell. You know, I'll have a table. Expand my audience a little bit. Maybe I could get an interview or two. Haven't heard anything back from them yet. Who knows? Oh, yeah, no. That's the thing, though. A lot of those cons, especially if they're, you know, just starting out. Oh, yeah, they, they you know, so many things to figure out. It's like, I, you know, I've talked to people that do cons and just the stuff they go through for to put things together, it is insane. Just like even, right. just you know, all those logistics and, oh, you know, I know I couldn't do that. That's insane. Right. And we, you and I both, you and I had heard the man, that one particular episode from, which started out as a practical joke from Slacker and the Man, and it, it came out and was like, yeah, this is, we learned so much about the logistics behind of getting, doing a show just by pranking about it. Mm-hmm. And, and it was like, yeah, and... I kind of know firsthand as well. It's like I know now, talking to Matt about it and what he's going through and what he goes through to put on a show. And I don't remember this. Was that the, that time they were trying to convince Barker that a con was going to happen? Yeah, yeah. I think every week they're like, oh, this guest is going to be there and whatever and whatever. And poor Barker. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor Barker. Poor Barker. Uh that's right. Yeah, even just just like making up a fake thing. Yeah, no, they had to go through so much ridiculous planning just for that. And I know Matt has told me. Now, here's the beauty of it. Matt has told me that because of the job he's doing on a local level, putting on these shows, and the success he's been having, and when he went to one particular place to see if he could put on a show there, they said, we loved what you do with the show. We'll be more than happy to rent out our location for a show in, in this area. So, which kind of shows you, you know, the kind of, if you're a success at A, B will look, it will try to reel you in to get come there. And it's just a matter of details. And that's the beauty of it. And oh, That's the beauty of it, especially... If you can take skills from one area of life and apply them to another, like I've kind of learned that just through my normal everyday job and then kind of in learning, especially, you know, during last winter, I actually had a seasonal management position. I was a supervisor in my job. And even then, there were a lot of things I learned through being in management that I'm like, okay, I can apply this to, you know, kind of back end site stuff, kind of professional communications, things like that. That's why this show is on my resume as well. And if I so choose to last year, if I didn't, but I could have, they're like, well, we need people in kind of HR to help do interviews. It would have been the perfect thing for me to put in. It's like, yeah, do you realize what I do on a weekly basis? <laughs> it's like, I've done interviews. You want links? I could give you links to interviews I've done. And because I'm sure the principle is the same, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, but... Right, and then even from the other side, working, doing convention stuff or some of the other projects I've been involved with, I was able to take those experiences and answer those questions that you get on job interviews where you're like, oh, tell us about a time where you handled this kind of situation or dealt with this kind of an employee or... You know, did this or this? And I'm like, well, we go to this oddball left corner of the galaxy and uh, throw, <laughs> throw this weird story at you. Right. And to uh, 
for a few minutes, I want to talk a little bit about some, uh, so we don't bore our good listeners to death, uh, as much as I like doing that to them. <laughs> uh, how caught up are you on the movie scene? Um, in regards to what, like Marvel? Yeah, Marvel in general. Oh, I am caught up completely. I've, I've seen Infinity War twice. I just saw Deadpool on Thursday. I'm good. So, yeah, I saw Deadpool today. What'd you think of Deadpool? I loved it. It It's just that great break-the-fourth-wall humor. The jokes were there. The, the carnage, the violence. Oh, my God. Everything. I For me, it's I know a little bit about Deadpool, and I loved the movies. Um, to me, the only issue I didn't see, I liked Domino, just that I'm used to the photo negative, the comic book version of it, of do, that character. So it it just took me a little bit to get used to the on screen version. Yeah, probably for me, I don't read too many comics, so I guess that wasn't a factor for me. Right. I, I love, and I cannot remember the actress's name, but she was phenomenal. She, right, she was, she was. She stole the show pretty much any time she was in it. Right, and I love, uh, there is a few scenes in it that I, as much, alright folks, spoilers, if you haven't seen it, go see it, pause this podcast, stop this podcast, go see it, come back. And start listening again, because spoilers, screw you all, we're giving you spoilers. <laughs> uh, not complete spoilers, just some spoilers that are not going to really spoil everything. Maybe a couple of Easter eggs and cameos that are in it. Uh, was the aspect of, they kind of redid a joke, but kind of made it funny again. Is the whole aspect of, this is the second time I've been here, and you and you know, nuclear warhead are the only two people here. <laughs> Where is everybody else? And his back is to an open door, and they and it's everybody else, and they kind of slowly close the door. Like, they're trying to, their best to avoid just Deadpool. <laughs> it was the perfect, the perfect cameo, perfect setup, and they made the joke even better. Oh, I love and, that. And I was like, and it was just one of those things, I look up at that, that moment and I see Beast, I see... Uh, I'm pretty sure Cyclops was there, Gene, Nightcrawler... I, I, saw, I saw Beast and I saw uh, Professor Xavier. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, I missed out looking at everybody. I saw a whole mess of other people there, but damn it! It's like, son of... Oh. It's like, if, if Solo wasn't coming out next week, I would go out just to re-watch it, to guess, get all the nuances. There were jokes all... He was tossing jokes all over the place. I love the dig at Rob Liefeld. Right. Oh, <laughs> some guy who can't draw feet. So feet! As that one joke I keep telling people in reference to that they're new to uh, the comic, being the part of the comic scene. It's like, oh, congratulations, you're now collecting comics. Uh, here's your standard Marvel card, your standard DC card, and besides, here's your I Hate Rob Liefeld card. Uh, trust me, you're going to hate him, you got to hate him. It's part of the, being a comic collector. Just, just show him the picture of Captain America. Um, Despite of every evidence to the contrary, you got to hate him, and here's why. <laughs> like, um, you just look at that picture, and like, um, why does Captain America have boobs? No, those are his pectorals. It, it, yeah, those are his pectorals. He was sick when he did that. You're supposed to hate him because of this. It was a one-time thing that he just didn't really want to do. Oh, the 90s were an, an odd time for comic books. Between the colors and the body proportions and... Everything else. <laughs> Boy, what a time. But Deadpool was amazing. It was funny. And... I don't know if he caught this or not, but on the way home, I saw an article pop up through my feed. Warner Brothers wants the Green Lantern ring back from Ryan Reynolds. (laughs) 
because this was both Deadpool's, I think one of the reasons why is because both Deadpool's sur- including this one might surpass yeah, I'm pretty sure Green they, Lantern's entire run like <laughs> each <laughs> on its opening day oh uh, yeah and let's see, let me pull up the article in regards to what they there said. Good, there were some good digs at Green Lantern on this one, too. Yeah, expe- folks, there are two after credit scenes. Ooh. Oh, they so, were brilliant. Oh, the second one, I, I would have taken a knee. <laughs> this, because this, just everything was like, okay, it. I understand whether it was funny because it was kind of recapping the movie, then they went full on Deadpool, <laughs> which made things even funnier. <laughs> it's like, the, here's the article, hopefully it doesn't bring up a full page ad on me, awesome. and let's see here. I saw an article today that um, apparently someone in the writing staff, but apparently it never got to any fruition, but apparently someone had um, tried to put the idea of a uh, trying to get Chris Evans to do a, a quick appearance as Johnny Storm it, during that scene where they're auditioning all the heroes for X-Force. Just have, like, Johnny Storm come up looking for work. Oh, that would that would have been funny, especially if he was wearing, like, a Captain America shirt on. I mean, yeah, it, it, it pretty much they, never happened because they were like, yeah, we, we were pretty sure we weren't getting Chris Evans. But, you know, it would have been funny. Oh, uh, yeah, it would have been funny, just that... It would never happen. Uh, what Warner Brothers tweeted out, uh, this was... What? Oh, this was today. Um, tonight, that's why it happened right after uh, I was coming back from the movie. Warner Brothers turned out, uh, tweeted out, Sorry, Van City Reynolds, or in essence, Ryan Reynolds. We're going to need the ring back. And it's a picture of uh, one of the Green Lantern Corps with their hand out, like, give me the, we want the ring, and he replied, he says, for his part, Reynolds tweeted back that if we used a Nuva ring in the first place, we wouldn't be in this mess, and the article explains that Nuva ring is a vaginal contraceptive ring, which was much more popular around the time of Green Lantern's production, in the same sense, the company has made Makes, that makes NuvaRing has been accused of having negative effects r- related to the product and are in the process of settling about a hundred million dollars worth of civil suits. So, basically, <laughs> wow. Oh. In a way, if you want to read between the lines, he's like, uh, no. <laughs> I want to make fun of you all I want. That is a very Ryan Reynolds approach to that. <laughs> right, and the thing is, he him in, it seems like, um, what's, uh, uh, person who played Wolverine, I'm, his name Hugh is Jackman. Hugh Jackman, um, have been kind of buddy-buddy in reference to kind of promoting it, it's like a f- two friends ribbing each other all back and forth, and that's, that's the fun aspect, it's like, I get it, you're making fun of me, it's, you know, have at it, oh. have at it, go ahead. I think that's why Deadpool's marketing has just been so successful. Because it's Deadpool, you can just go balls to the wall with everything. Right. And luckily, Hugh Jackman has a great sense of humor to begin with, and he doesn't... I'm not saying he doesn't give a shit, but he's, he's rolling with it. He, I think he, part of Hugh Jackman understands why Ryan Reynolds is doing it, and he's kind of playing his part in a way. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how um, Chris Evans and uh, what's his name Tony Stark were doing the back and forth in regards to Civil War. It, they're they're just doing. They know his marketing. What you know, it's not hurting his reputation just to play along. Mm-hmm. So why not? Screw it. <laughs> Help, you know, it's the both same. If we get more Logan watchers at us, let's you know why not. Why not? Oh, you know, I, and I, while I have, go ahead. I I definitely love the movie. I, I thought Josh Brolin was amazing as Cable. Oh, he was. He was. It. it I'm not too familiar with the. Char- I know a little bit about the character, but not 
a lot about the character. Yeah, I was going to say, the main thing I know about Cable is from the X-Men cartoon back in the day. Yeah, I think me too. But it is a That's very half... gritty character. And I thought, from what I know of Cable, I thought Brolin nailed it. Right. And it was good to see. And while I have you here, what did you think of uh, Infinity War? Oh boy, Infinity War. It was amazing. <laughs> it was. It, there was a, still a lot of heart, heartfelt strings pulled, and mm-hmm. uh, oh, yeah. as you know, uh, Slacker <laughs> Man had Uncle Joe. We got Uncle Tony here uh, on our end. I couldn't steal a lot of stuff from uh, those guys, so I had to bring an uncle in it somehow. And I did. Someone post up uh, through my feed a. Uncle Tony version of Infinity War. Mm. It didn't last long on Facebook. No. And I had to share it. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think I saw that. <laughs> because I shared it on my main page, and I shared it on the show's page. Like, Uncle Tony uh, graced us with a copy of Infinity War. Watch it while you can. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Now I'm definitely more excited for Ant-Man and the Wasp, Captain Marvel. It- uh it's going to be interesting. you got to figure, as of right now, there are still a, a crap ton of people going to see Avengers right now. It's still playing in theaters. Oh, yeah. So, it, and it made worldwide $2 billion. Oh, well, you know, I, I actually saw that Black Panther is still in theaters. Like, probably in some places. And it just came out on Blu-ray this week. Right, it's probably playing in, like, the dollar... Uh, dollar and two dollar theater somewhere. You know, like and it was actually playing in the same theater I just saw Deadpool yesterday. Wow. Yeah, no. Apparently, that movie is still making money. Uh, uh, that's what I think a lot of theaters tend to do. If it's still making money, they're not going to let go of it until something. Maybe next week you'll see Black, Black Panther leave because Solo's coming in. Right. I think that's so. The longest I ever saw a movie in a theater was, like, this was back in the VH in the VHS days, like Apollo 13, and you, and back in those days, it took like almost a year for the VHS of a movie to come out. Wow! And like, that is when wild. the VHS came out, like the theater I drove by every day every day to school, still had Apollo 13 listed on the on the, the list. marquee. And the thing is. Right now, when I went to see, I expected there to be a crowd, even though it's like technically day two in regards to Deadpool, I didn't expect to see a dead, I kind of did, but didn't expect to see a large crowd going to see Deadpool 2, but as I'll let you know, but I got to speak to the listeners too, uh, our major theater, our main chain theater that w- that's here in our area, closed down, shut down. I wish this is a theater that twenty years ago, I was one of the first people to go into this theater when it initially opened up. It closed down this past as of this recording. It closed down the nineteenth. Uh, two days ago, it closed down on the eight Thursday, the eighteenth. I wish I could have been there the last day for a bookend, but I had the ability to do go do it, but not the funds. Oh, yeah. So it and it would have been kind of like the last hurrah as a bookend, but I couldn't really do that. And the thing is, the theater that had I went to go see Deadpool at has been open for at least 40 years, 30, 40 years, if not longer. And they're going to be here for another 30 or 40 because this major theater going and gone. So they're getting the extra traffic in now. Oh, yeah, no, that's only going to help them. Yeah, and that's what is helping them is because... Like Recently, <laughs> as some of you might have heard on our last week's program, this smaller theater does a lot of theater exclusives. And the big theater didn't do that. Should have they, they should have been doing. Meaning, when Regal 
the big chain theater that was in our area was Regal. Regal used to do these like little DVD, CD-ROM, uh, magazine things for the people. Our theater never got them, never for whatever reason. But recently, the smaller theater, the one I go to because it's cheaper. Now, don't quote me on it because, and folks of you who live in the Martinsburg, West Virginia area, please don't quote me on it. But I think they just dropped their prices because of the new traffic coming to their theater. Because normally it was any movie past 4 p.m. was $7, and every movie prior to 4 p.m. was 5 And I saw a 5 p.m. showing of Deadpool 2 for 5 bucks, which is a great, for me that's a great deal. $5 to see a movie, even if it's $7 for a non-matinee, still a great price. And they have, um, for their extra large drinks, it was a Deadpool cup. And they were giving away for those, I don't know if it was extra, for the larger buckets of popcorn, you had, I think you had a choice of a handled plastic Deadpool popcorn bu- uh, bucket or a metal popcorn bucket for Deadpool. Oh, wow. So I don't know if it was extra for the metal one or not. And I know during an Avengers Infinity War... You had your choice of theater exclusives, which was, I don't think they have them anymore. That was a, for, I think for the larger bucket, it looked, it looked like an oversized pop figure. But it was for, it had, it was like a bucket of popcorn with a lid. They had Hulk, uh, Thor, uh, uh, Iron Man, I think they had one or two others. And... They had those were ten bucks a piece. Uh, they had their standard uh, snack exclusive, which was a covered lid of uh, popcorn, Avengers, and large drink, and a candy for seven seventeen fifty. And the third set of exclusives were keychains of like Thor, Spider Man, Iron Man. One or two others. It was one. These are theater. Those were two bucks a piece, but they were theater exclusives. These are people. These are things that tend to get some people in seats. And who doesn't want a theater exclusive? Right. See, I don't it's like going to a con and getting a con exclusive. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't even remember any of my theaters around here having anything like that. Right. Granted, I also usually buy my tickets online because also. Because I got off work at like 9.30, so I had to like bolt to the theater. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I know, I already had to have my ticket purchased ahead of time. So I know how that goes. It, I mean, it, it was fun to see Avengers, it was fun to see this. I know there's going to be a few people that are going to be talking about it. So I think I've already seen like four or five movies this year. I think I saw like maybe two last year in theaters. I've seen a few. It, it's... To go back on a, a previous topic, it's it's kind of. Do you find it weird because you have Geek World Order to run? Do you find it weird doing stuff, even though you would normally go to something like Avengers or or Deadpool? Anyway, do you find it also weird doing it for the site as well? A little bit. Not really. I never really thought about that. I think it's because I, I'm kind of still new at doing this, that it kind of was like, well, I get to, not, not only am I going to be talking to friends about this, I get to talk to a wider audience as well. What a concept. And I think it helps that I, it, it's stuff I was going to do anyway. Right. <laughs> it's like, I, it's kind of weird in, in, in a way. If it was going to be something that I was having to make extra effort to go towards or kind of go out of my way to do. Yeah, I'd probably feel differently about it. But I think that's why I run the side I do, because it feeds into my interests regardless. So it kind of helps me explore those interests in different ways. Right. And one other little geeky little tidbit. Uh, Have you seen the new aspect of the Thundercats show that they want to do? Kill it with fire. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> killing with fire. <laughs> killing with fire. 
getting angry just thinking about that trailer again. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I think... Please, dear God, let me just... please, please nobody do that with Transformers. <laughs> I, mean, we, we already have, I mean, we already have rescue bots, but that is purposely aimed at, at a child audience. That what, what, what is this Thundercats thing? I think that's what's that's what a lot of people are saying. It's geared towards a younger audience or the audience of today. And but my first thought when I looked at it, it was like, dear God, they teen tightened the the Thundercats. Oh, gee. Although I've seen the trailers for that Teen Titans go to the movies, I'm not gonna lie. There are some funny jokes in there. It, I know the animation is so awful. Like, I'm not gonna pay to see it in the theaters. Right, but you, you know, know what I'm say- saying in regards to it's like when it first came out in regards to the Teen Titans, the artwork was. The, I mean, the original Teen Titans. I won't. I don't think they were Teen Titans Go at that time, but they were Teen Titans. The art, the animation was dang near top notch. It, yeah, it was bordering on anime quality. Right. Then all of a sudden it went south. They, it it got. That got canceled and got, or it got rebooted under kind of like the Teen Titans, t- Teen Titans Go and uh, movie animation type style. Uh, oh, and then the it, it, Powerpuff it was painful to watch. It was. Thing. What was that? I know the Powerpuff Girls reboot was kind of the same thing. Although that one wasn't bad because that anim- that was still closer to the original animation style. Is just this yeah. these were just awful for that. I haven't seen the reboot, but uh, if what you I'm going to take your word on it. If if it was that, you're not talking about night. This is night and day uh, in regards to the Thundercats go. It, meaning, yeah. granted, I'll say this: the the, sto- the Transformers from the '80s, GI Joe from the '80s, even the Thundercats from the '80s. You had great stories, you had great animation, but the one. Brass tacks, they were there to sell toys. Although... You might not not have gotten the, gra- the greatest stuff, but uh, they were initially designed to sell toys oh, yeah, to us. Matches. Although I gotta admit, uh, Undercats was probably my least favorite. I don't know why. Like, I actually had problems. Like, once the theme song was over, I was just like, yeah, whatever, it's on. Uh, I Again, I'm a, I'm a child of the 80s. I loved it. I loved He-Man. I didn't care if they were trying to sell me toys or not, but I watched every episode. And I'd actually never seen an episode of He-Man until it got on Netflix. Oh, it, it was cring- to me when I rewatched uh, He-Man, the original '80s cartoon. I was like, "Oh, this is painful." I've seen this the, is the, the more modern series though, the He-Man. It, it, I've seen it. Uh, I didn't get into it, but it I understood where they were coming from with that. And it's like the reboot of the Thundercats that came out in 2011. It I liked it. It for its time and what they were trying to do, I I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And it's like they were taking, okay, we're going to take the best bits of the original series m- minus all the we're going to try to sell toys even though we're going to be selling toys anyway, and we're going to try to make it even better. And I applaud them for it, and I'm sad to see it go, and how it ended, in regards to what they were trying to do with it. And now we got this kill or fire type of animation, in which, what did the director say? Their, their piece came out in regards to, uh, he said, uh, he said the director, Jer- uh, Jeremy, oh, damn you, not that, just that the, he said, uh, Said, uh, he said, yo, I'm directing the new Thundercat series. Hate all you want, but this show rocks. Well, in regards to him, uh, per this show, you're paid to say that. And that's my that's my response. You're paid to say that. I get the need to, especially in animation, cater to a younger audience. Because there is still the stigma that animation in general is for kids. But 
you can still appeal to adults. You can do something like Thundercats in a new way. Um, I think one of the things that kind of figured that out was uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, Because I've seen a few episodes of the the current series that was on Nickelodeon the last couple years. It was really good. And it, it, is that the, the the CG animation yeah. type? Okay, I think I might have caught. I don't have cable, but I think I've caught it either on Netflix or somewhere else. Or and it definitely had a feel that okay, it's catered to kids, but it still had decent stories, and there were things that would appeal to the adult audience that would be like, oh, I watched Ninja Turtles when I was a kid. Let me check out this new show. Right. And there's still things that would appeal to them. I think the one that's gotten the absolute perfection of that balance of, yes, you have to appeal to kids, but you can treat the adults just right and not mess with anybody's intelligence, is the new DuckTales. I didn't get a chance to... I might have seen the premiere episode through uh, YouTube, but I'm kind of waiting on either some app or another to have it, probably either Netflix some time down the road, or especially when Disney puts their streaming app online. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll be plucking 10 bucks a month for that. Oh, yeah, no, th- that'll be that'll be worth it to watch that one. That has been... That, that, that show has kept the, the quality that was of the first episode. They've kept it through the whole season. Because of you being for uh, the... The word escapes me, the... I want to say the expert, the portrayer of geeky things with Geek World Order. What do you think about the uh, uh, SNES, not SNES, the NES Classic being reissued this end of June? What are your thoughts of it coming back out? Hey, maybe I'll get a chance to get one. <laughs> oh, same here, same here. I, I'm hoping that if I don't get it by the end of June, I'll probably get it. Sometime either August, probably in June, uh, if not July, August, or September, sometime over the three months or four months that it, it is out. Give it some time before, so the crowds kind of dwindle. Yeah, I'm pretty, it's more of, um, when am I going to have the funds for it? But right. I just want to make sure I get through Megacon and then figure out what funds do I have after that. Because that's Megacon right. is also kind of my main vacation of the year. So I'm like, eh, kind of want to make sure I have the fun so that, you know, I have a good vacation. Right. And then, like, all right, if, if I have much extra money from what I've saved over, all right, then I'll do, you know, whatever. I'll have the, the treat yourself day. I just know the, uh, the arguments once it comes back out, or if they haven't started already, uh, a lot of the diehard retro gaming people will be saying, oh, you can do the same thing with a Raspberry Pi, and this system, and that system, and it's like, well, there are people like right. me and yeah. Ra- Randy that, you know, if a, a Raspberry Pi is costing 60 bucks, uh, I, no, I, I'm going to have everything pre-installed, everything's going to be for the same 60 bucks plus tax, I can put. I got something of decent quality yep. in my hand. And I can literally, you know, it's a little downscale, but I can literally put it in, in, in a, or a Nintendo Entertainment System on my entertainment console and hold the controller. Right. I don't have to worry about everything like that. It To me, it's geared towards people like me and Randy. I know from what I've heard, if you do get one, depending on how you have it set up, you might need to get the, uh, the controller extender if you know there's going to be some distance between you and the TV. Because I've heard the, the, the cables on those aren't super long. But then they could have fixed the issue with this reissue. Who knows? We'll see when it comes out. Yeah, no, they, yeah, no I definitely want to get one of those if I can. And again, same here. I'll be happy when I get it. And the beauty, again, the beauty of these little things, I have the SNES Mini. If I went out of town somewhere, or if I was staying at a hotel for a convention for three days, I'd be bringing this little device with me just to have something to, you know, fiddle with. Right. Because it hooks up to any TV with an HDMI part. All you need is a plug place to plug it in. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, that's... And, oh, come on, like you wouldn't bring a, the, an SNES Mini with you 
to like MegaCon if you're staying there for three days. Oh, dude! I... With like uh, F Zero and Mario Kart already on it. Oh, you know the lineup of games on those consoles is amazing. Right, and it, it's it's something that every nostalgic little fan will want to get their hands on. But it's that's pretty much. What else can we cover? Um, did you know that I saw? Are you a CW fan at all? Uh, not particularly. Okay, then we'll... I haven't watched like any of the superhero shows. I, I think I watched okay. like half of the first season of Agents of Shield, and then I was like, eh, I'll watch it eventually. Oh, there's like six seasons now. Crap. Uh, so uh, it's, it's me gauging where I can bring things with the show. So don't worry about it, and folks at home, for the for those of you at home that are expecting a Review of uh, Necroman. Uh, we didn't receive our press box yet. Uh, it's not because, as some of you might know from listening to the show, uh, we've had package thieves in the past, and we've had our mail carrier decide, fuck it, I'm not delivering mail to any houses on our street for three months. But it, that's not the case this time around. Uh, the person who's b- behind the project has informed us that he has been busy lately getting everything ready for the kind of the national release of this particular comic and he'll be getting us everything out to people including us within the next week or so and he'll let us know when things are on its way so don't worry about that Hmm. and once we get it in our hand there will be YouTube videos there will be Facebook videos and there will be a review on this show in regards to that and we'll have the person behind it on this show as well, talking to him about what he's doing. So stay tuned, folks. Yeah, I can understand how that goes. I know I've, <laughs> I've got several albums that I have to listen through and do reviews on. I've just been throwing so many hours at work lately, just because it's been hella busy. But I'm okay with making some extra money, though. I'm okay with that. Uh, it, it That's one of the things that I've had to learn with this, it's like, yeah, things are going to fall through, and it's weird, it, it is so weird, <laughs> uh, uh, sorry folks, it's just that, uh, I'm double checking with, uh, my feet to make sure I am not missing anything and want to cover a few things, uh, on the show, especially with Randy, our special guest for this week, uh, a a friend of mine that I know, he works at, I'm going to put this politely, a, he works at a gentleman's club. Please do not hold that against him. Uh, <laughs> a customer, I guess the person was drunk, it is after 12, bumped into him and just shoved a bunch of ones in his shirt. <laughs> his comment was, hell, I just made a tip, some customer just shoved ones in my shirt. <laughs> These are what happens on the show, live, folks. Because we're professionals. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, like uh, Slacker and the Man has ever made the same comment before. <laughs> we're professionals. We're going to call people up. <laughs> we only learn from the best. Right. <laughs> By the way, I think I have Dobbs' number. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm definitely looking forward to this week, though. Because um, I've already got my tickets booked for solo on Thursday. Because um, basically I'm going to... Because uh, Thursday is kind of like the preview day for Megacon. I don't, the the show opens is like... I think it's like 3 to 8 or something. They're open on Thursday. It's kind of like a half day. So basically I'll be able to go into my hotel. Which is right next to the convention center. So I literally get to walk from my hotel room. Across a nice little sky bridge connected to the convention center. Check in. I'll, I'll probably check the con out for like about maybe like two, three hours, and then I only have to walk like maybe a quarter mile down to the the movie theater. There's like literally a movie theater like that close to the convention center. Yeah. So lucky you. So yeah. I would. Uh, the reason I want to say that is that folks, if we did manage to go to Awesome Con this year and cover it, we 
As some of you might remember, uh, Ready Player One well, came out that same weekend. I would have had the same problem then that Randy does now. <laughs> well, thank you. But Randy has easier access to a theater than I probably would have in D.C. I was like, wait a minute, when does Solo? Oh, Solo comes out that week. I was like, um, can I get a ticket? Hey, I can get a ticket. Uh, this will be an interesting experience for me because I've never actually gone, apparently it was, it's a reserved seating theater. Oh, that's new. Yeah, I've never actually had one of those. But apparently I booked my ticket early enough, I, I got exactly where I want. Because for me, I love being like back row center. I want to be, like, in the furthest back row. Like, I want to feel the vibrations from the surround sound. I, for some reason, I like sitting right under the under the projector, basically. Also, it helps with my vision, because um, right now I wear bifocals, so I'd rather have, like, the entire screen in, like, the top part, the main part I see out of, not, like, the reading, not trying to, like, see part of the screen with both lenses. Uh, I don't have that issue yet, but for me, it's mostly still the aisle, se- aisle seat. So, the only thing I can't really get to, or the only theater I can't really get to right now is the local Alamo, which, for, I won't say some good reason, but they serve beer. <laughs> and, shh, don't tell some people. I found it interesting when I first went there that you were able to have beer while watching a movie. Felt it so ironic. Yeah, no, there actually used to be one of those um, kind of theaters in my town. It used to be a two, it was like a two theater one that had a bunch of tables set out through it. You could get like food and beer. Like I never actually went into the theater, but funny thing is that where that theater used to be is actually now our local comic book shop. Um, it's oh, the iron. a great theater here in, or a great comic shop here in Melbourne called Famous Faces and Funnies. They're an amazing shop, and the way they've got their floor set up is that there, there's actually two businesses in there. There's a there's the comic shop, and there's also another store called Get Your Fun On. It's a game store, so it's two businesses in the same room. Which the main store is like you know where the theater lobby used to be, but where they had the two movie rooms. One is the comic book side of it, where they put all the toys, the back issues, you know, all the merch. Like, you know, the merch isn't the main comics. And then the other theater is, like, just a room filled with tables, like shelves and shelves of, like, sample games. And basically where they do, like, all their game days and magic nights and league. And... So it's actually a really cool setup, the way they got it in there. Yeah, uh, that... That sounds, and I bet it looks awesome. And it kind of pulled me back into the idea that uh, my buddy has for the show in this area. If it, everything goes through, I won't know until he kind of announces the details. And just that the location is where same location is where the theater, it, the five dollar theater I just went to tonight was. And on the other side is a. Ga- tabletop gaming store, but they kind of sell comics a little. The just current issues, not back, total back issues. Mm-hmm. Meaning they're five percent comic shop, ninety five percent gaming store, hmm. and in the back part of the store is their where they would have all the. Uh, um, meaning you could have if you wanna if you don't have space at home to do Dungeons and Dragons, they have that space. If you want to do Magic the Gathering, they have that space. So you could have Dungeons and Dragons, Warcraft 9000, or whatever, Warhammer 9000. You could have Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, and Magic the Gathering all going on at the same time in that store. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of awesome, but the thing is, if the big event is happening, it would help them out. But I could see the owner complaining because he's told me in the past that you'll never do a convention or a major convention because there's competition. Mm -hmm. That if he's part of a convention and he sees other dealers selling the same stuff he is, he's out. He'll leave. He'll pack up and go. 
hmm. and try to demand a refund. He's told me this. Oh, wow. Not on record, but he's told me this before. So it would be interesting to see him kind of badmouth a major convention that's giving him business. Hmm. Or a major local convention giving him business. That's why I'd be laughing my ass off if it, if it happens. Because I'd be setting up there, too. <laughs> I'd be like, dude, I'd have a table at, your, at the event. And or, or just set up at like the, the public table next to the event. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, I'd know the promoter, too, and he'd be like, oh, dear God, why are you doing this? <laughs> because I... <laughs> he'd, let me do it. he'd let me do it, but <laughs> he'd probably be like... You know, if you just paid the 30 bucks, you'd be inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, hush. <laughs> but uh, I think this year, hopefully, I know I'm doing the event uh, June 2nd. That's in two weeks. I have all my supplies ready. I think today I spent, this is also for the folks at home, I spent 40 bucks for a... Brand, I won't say brand new. It's brand new to me because it's a basic. I don't know what's with me in uh, Vivitar products, but I've been buying them a lot lately because they're uh, within my price range. Uh, Forty dollar twenty megapixel camera, digital camera. I figured my old one that I've been using many years ago is finally hit the hit dead. It's dead on me. And I need a new one anyway. It's 40 bucks. And besides, when I, if and when I am approved for Articon, having an actual camera with me will make me look a little bit more professional than using a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> It'll give me a little bit more credibility. I'll still use my cell phone to post things to Instagram and mm -hmm. quick Facebook stuff, but well, having that camera will, will probably help a few things. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm. Oh, I got it. Oh, I'm gonna have to do equipment check soon, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that that's like a whole night in of itself. Just making sure all the cameras are packed, all the gear oh, ready. That that's me. It's just it's kind of like. Although that's like kind of the one of the fun things about like the costuming I do is like, how can I work my gear into it? That's kind of like the main reason I did um, the GI Joe scoop as like one of my main costumes. Because that's literally a reporter. So most of my gear is literally carried on the character in the open. Although one of the nice things with like the G.I. Joe costumes, I have a camera holster. It's called the Spider Pro. It's like this super heavy nylon uh, belt with, steel, with metal components on it. It actually doubles as a combat belt, I've, I have just figured out. Because I can just strap it around my waist and I can, you know, hang, like, holsters and stuff from it. And it looks tactical. I, I'm just dreading August I've, for me. I'm just dreading August. I'll be happy when it hits. I'll be happy to do what I need to do. I'm just dreading August. Because that's when Otacon hits. And I was like, if I get the press pass, my bag is so going to be jam-packed with stuff. It's... It's disgusting. I'm not walking to the convention center with this. As much as I like it and like using the backpack, I'm not using a camping backpack that I normally use to bring the entire studio with me mm -hmm. just for a convention that it's like yeah. I might need to as well. Because, yeah, I'm I, not a I fan of carrying a backpack anymore. Um, luckily, most of my system is, I have my main camera, which it basically sits in my hip now, instead of having it around my neck, and everything else I need, I can put into a messenger bag, so at least I've got a lower profile, you know, because if you're wearing a backpack, especially if a, a, a packed busy con, that, that backpack's going to get hit, and you're going to get jerked around. I'm a big fellow, so it's not going to be... An issue has never been an issue for me. It's just that it's going to be, it's going to have, this year I'm planning to bring my laptop with me and at least the one mic so I can do stuff there and hopefully start recording there and doing stuff at the show. And 
if not, because it, Otacon has always been a very, they don't hang out on the dealer room. They do, but they, the most of the people there are not on the dealer floor or industry floor. They're out and about. So it's easy for me, and it's, that's my mindset with this show, is that I could easily do a person on the street or deal. I'm not stuck in that green room. That's why some of those peers probably don't like me. <laughs> because I'm easy, like, i got to go out, i got to report that this is what I do, this is who I am. It's easier for me to do that. That's how the show is kind of geared around. It's geared around you, the geeks out there listening, as well as us reporting stuff to you. It, that's just me. It's me sticking a microphone in somebody's face and like, tell me what you think of the show. And I can easily do that at, at Otacon if they do it. It's just a matter of me just packing the laptop in there along with a couple of flyers, a couple of business cards, plus uh, camera, equi- uh, camera equipment to get uh, video and stills and make sure everything, I have enough batteries for everything and everything's got a charge. So it's just going to be like, okay, I'm going to be pulling my hair out, and but I'm going to try to have as much fun as I can mm-hmm. doing what I do best, running around like a chicken with its head cut off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I, I'm going to know the feeling. That is going to be me next week. <laughs> you're going to have a good time. You're going to just, when you get home, it's just time to crash. Mm-hmm. Time to crash. And uh, I think... I've, I've told people, my parents, when I've come home, this is, again, long before I've done this, and I've come home from the shows worn the hell out that I've come home with a case as far, a case of as far as, that meaning I've made it as far as the couch and passed out. Yeah. Stuff has been in the car overnight that I picked up at a show because I was too wore the hell out. And I've gotten flack from my stepfather, my mom, and other people. Why are you wore out every time you go to a show? You don't understand. Yeah, it, 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 the whole line, I'm sure you quoted the line too, it's a con thing. You don't understand. You know, it just... <laughs> and I think a year or two after getting a little flack from my folks in regards to coming down with con fatigue and, you know, con funk. You know, you've been through it yourself, I'm sure, many times. And they finally, my stepfather and my mom went to a show themselves for uh, vet uh, veterans. They came back. I spoke to them, I think, the day, after, the day that they came back. They were like, oh, we can't stay on the phone too long. We're wore out. I'm like, what'd you two do? Oh, we went to a, we just got back from a convention. I, the first words out of my mouth was, <laughs> you know, I know how it feels. <laughs> like, it's not funny. <laughs> like, yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's like, now you understand how I felt all those times, now do you? You didn't believe me. Mm-hmm. And then you get to go to work the next day. Yeah, that... <laughs> And the thing is, at that time, I was working overnight shift. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it hurt. <laughs> it hurt so good. Yeah, no, I get to work the next day. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, the Memorial Day Monday is a required working day. <laughs> I couldn't get it off. Oh, I, I'm already off Mondays anyway, so it's... The fun thing, that, that was going to be the fun thing for me when my schedule has a tendency to change. Even though it's steady, it has a tendency to change on a whim. Mm-hmm. And when I got off of uh, my holiday schedule, they initially told me, you're going to have Fridays off. And I was already kind of planning for Awesome Con. Yeah, again, as geeks, we know how it is when it comes to cons. We, we plan three months ahead. So I figured, great, I don't have to take off that Friday, plus I'll have that Monday off. Perfect. Come to find out, now we're going back to the schedule you had prior to uh, the holiday season. Son of a mother. But it all worked out in the end. 
mm-hmm. and come come two weeks, I'll have my ho- uh, start earning vacation time again. So bring it, bring on the shows, mm-hmm. bring on the geeky content and the shows. I just got to make money now. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Someday, I, I, I'm at co- cons buying stuff like, I hate being a geek. I hate being a geek. Why am I buying all this stuff? Yeah, I'm like, okay. Oh, good, I got my tax check. Well, we're just going to save. We're just going to put this portion of it away from Megacon. So we already know. I ain't going to have much for my normal paycheck, so we're just going to hold this over for now. I did that at uh, oh, I, Matt's, la- I, I, Matt's I, last I, show. Oh, I purposely waited to file my taxes because I'm like, yeah, I know I'm going to need the money for Megacon. <laughs> and I was like, when I got my stuff, it was like, okay, I'm not going to Awesome Con. I got, I spent like $150. Oh, shut up. Uh, I spent like $150 at Matt's show. Uh, I went there not as a someone doing what I'm doing now, but as a ticket holder. And just... You know, buying prints, buying uh, original art, not the high-end stuff, just the quick prints that they that are easily detailed. I was like, oh, so good, so good. I think you've seen some of the stuff that I posted up. It was fun. I, I literally had fun. It just wore me the hell out. <laughs> it's like, I haven't felt this way in years. Thank you. <laughs> that sounds like the normal day at a con. It's so yeah. fun. I am more than happy. So I was like, where did I spend $150 on the stuff I brought? Oh, that's where. That's where. It's like, oh, when all those pending transactions hit your bank account on Monday. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I use mostly cash when I go to a show. It's like, I'm not going to spend $150. Well, where'd it go? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get some food. Oh, wait, where's the money? Wait. It, and right, I, it's, it, it's, it's, it's all this stuff in my bag now. Right, uh, that that would be me if I had the money again to do it. And it, it, I would purposely bring a few people. And he's like, "Watch, this is how a convention professional does things." I have right now a grand on me. Watch it, how fast. Look, oh, there it goes. <laughs> and where did all this stuff come from? It, but it's only been twelve minutes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I've been there. I've been on the end of. Oh, hey, look, I have. A, it's a con. I have money. Here, and like defy me. Shut up and take my money. And and that, that's the thing is, like, I've had weekends where it's been like, I have twenty dollars to last four days. Those I've people, been there. The aspect of I've been on both ends of the stick in regards to that. I've been there that I've went in with twenty dollars and I've I didn't I might have touched five dollars of it and come away with a bunch of stuff. And I've been there with seventeen hundred dollars, and walked away with a hundred bucks in my pocket, and come away with a crap ton of stuff. Uh, so I've been on the both, both, literally on the both ends of the stick, and had great times with on both ends. Okay. So it, I've tell a lot of people who are new to shows, you don't need that much money to actually have fun at the show. Oh no, there is such a a high you get from going to conventions. Yeah, I I sponsor what I call sponsored somebody. It's like, listen, I'm going to be brought. He was his first. He's been to car shows before, and but he's never been to a a comic book show before. So I was like, listen, how interested are you in going? And he's like, eh, I'm kind of interested. I said, listen, if I pay you gas, food, and admission. Will you go and take me? He's like, all right. So I paid for his gas. I paid for his lunch. Paid for his ticket. Didn't cost me much overall. And he he turned to me later when we finally made up, uh, met back up because we got separated. He said, I wish I had money with me. And I said, why? He said, I didn't expect to see some dealers here selling stuff that I'm actually interested in. And I should have brought money. Yeah. And I said, well, that being said, are you still having a good time here? He, and he looked at me dead in the eyes and he said, though I'm not a big comic book fan, 
I'm having a blast. Mm-hmm. And Just he was that he, dealer that gave that boy, you, you gave that boy his first hit for free. Right. <laughs> and the thing is, he coined the fla- phrase because there were so many. Again, going to conventions, we know the cosplayers. He coined the phrase "God bless America." <laughs> <laughs> Because that it, it's like he didn't want to say anything that might have been either sexist or wrong. It was just like the only thing he could say that without getting him in trouble was, God bless America. <laughs> With a big grin on his face. And he, he had a blast. And that was the same year I caused a couple to have a fight. <laughs> Literally. And because... The, as you know, the fun thing to do at conventions is guess the cosplayer, especially when it's uh, something obscure. Mm-hmm. And sh- the person, when I was going to meet up with him, she was going the opposite way. I went, you're dressed up at, how, what was the movie? Oh, it, it, it was obscure. And I, I called it f- right off the bat. And that's when she starts storming off to her boyfriend, wherever he was, shouting at him, I told you somebody would recognize it. I told you. I told Oh, I love when they do that. And my other favorite t- uh, story... I you know you just people. made their day. Right. And the other story I love to tell is that when I went to my last Wizard World, this was back in 06, I kind of knew what the, uh, the person was cosplay was, but... The way her hair fell made her look like exactly dead on for Carmen San Diego, and I told her that to her face, and she said, "I'm getting my boyfriend." All right, all right, okay, and I'm within spitting dis- distance of the DC booth that was there. Yeah, DC does have booths every now and again, and they gave away great shit too. But so the person behind the booth is kind of overhearing what's being said because we're loud enough at this point. She walks away to get her boyfriend wherever he is. I'm thinking, I hope he's, you know, not one of these muscle-bound freaks that, you know, might be her boyfriend. But her friends are all hanging around me saying, don't worry, uh, she gets this all the time when she wears this particular cosplay. It happened to her this past Halloween. Don't worry about it. She shows up with her boyfriend who, let me put it like this, is skinnier than you, Randy. And I looked at him like, I could take him. <laughs> I could probably take him. But she turned to him and said, do you know what? And she's pointing at me furiously. Do you know what he told me that I looked like? And he just gave up right then and there and just gave her the hand sign saying, well, what? And he, she turned to him and said, well, he called me Carmen San Diego. He just gave her the once over and did the hand up to down like, as if to say, well, you do. <laughs> That's when her friends started laughing at laughing at the whole situation. The guy at the DC booth took a, he couldn't stand. He was bracing himself on the table. He was laughing so damn hard. I was on the floor because I couldn't stand. She she tapped she did just didn't stomp off. She stomped off anime style. Which caused everybody to laugh harder. Ooh. And it was like a bad day for me anyway. And I was just, it just popped the mood way up. Like, you just made my day. <laughs> I'm telling this story for years. And I have. <laughs> so it, it's stuff like that just makes your day. But, for um, again, before we probably were running kind of low, what are your tips for the new time, the first time convention goer? What are your tips while I have you here? Oh, I think it's really subjective. <laughs> um, I guess the biggest thing is try to have fun. Cause, As always. Because really, cause try to have fun and make the best of a situation. Because even if you go to a small con that's kind of a bust and not a lot to do, if you're with the right group of people, you can still make a damn good day out of it. Right. I know I've had a lot of great... Don't try, you know, if you go to a celebrity, don't try to embarrass yourself. Or do oh, that, that, that's your thing. 
Yeah, it, sometimes it happens. It happens. It happens. It, it, if it won't happen, it will happen at some point. <laughs> you will geek out. If you are going to be there all weekend, please bathe. Yeah. And if you're kind of like those like myself that are on the plus end of things, uh, I recommend to all of you, uh, Walmart sells uh, kind of wipes for a dollar, 40 wipes for a dollar. So if anything, if you feel like you're getting a little bit sweaty, head to the men's room, use a wipe, to, you know, kind of minimize things until you get back to your home hotel room. Please hydrate. Yeah, hydrate. Okay. So I went to a show a few years ago, a great a music fest called Here Palooza. They were sponsored by NOS Energy. Um, the first year they did the sponsorship, they were giving away full, like free full cans at their booth. So, I know this guy. Do, do you want to know how many he drank in one day? Five. Keep going. Eight. Twelve. That's way too many. Full-sized cans. and they kept... Those cans are not small. No. Oh, no, he was vomiting blood by the end of the night. We don't know how he lived. He lived. Yeah, no. Even four or five is the limit. Yeah, no. The, the next year they were like, they were, they had little cups and were pouring them. <laughs> yeah. I'd say if anything, if... Please drink. For drink. those of you, I know a lot, some cons have like water fountains or anything if they don't. I know con food and drink can be expensive, overly expensive. I know so, uh, the convention center in D.C., it's like $5 for a fucking can. And, yeah, you heard right, a can of soda. Yeah, I think and, I think at the Orange County Convention Center, I think the 20-ounce sodas are like 3 bucks a bottle, something like that. So if anything, go to a Walmart, go to a dollar store, uh, Family Dollar, Dollar Tree, some, any place that has a... Uh, a simple water bottle, like a, a a bike water bottle or something like that, bring it with you. Go to a men's room or a ladies' room and fill it with water if need be. Fill it with water. That way you have uh, – most conventions will convention centers will not really complain too much if you're using actual water and that's what it's for. That way you're, you maintain hydration. Yeah. Or, you know, if you're actually – putting other beverages in there. Make sure the, uh, the staff cannot smell it. Right. <laughs> you and I have, have have heard reports from the same people of that happening. Yeah. Because, you know, you go to a convention, someone hands you a, lip, a bottle of Lipton iced tea, it is told, you know, <laughs> that may or may not be straight crown. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. This, this is totally water in this bottle. No, you cannot smell it. <laughs> yes, sir. It's water. Yeah. Uh, I, I know. I see. I have this condition that my body naturally produces alcohol. Yeah. Well, see, if you know, my name is Ron White. And yes, I do smell <laughs> scotch. <laughs> but uh, it, there are, you could have, as we stated on the show many times before, you could have fun. With as little as nothing going to a show and as much as whatever the limit. But I've just main thing is, as Randy said, have fun. Uh, be polite, especially to the cosplayers. Don't harass them. No means no. Mm-hmm. Uh, and use your Keep judgment them. accordingly. What? Keep your hands where they can be seen. Right. <laughs> Uh, I had that. I almost had that issue last year at Otacon. Uh, someone was not using leggings for her Miss Marvel, and me being the overly wide fellow, it, I knew I could have made it through the spot that where she was, and I didn't want to take my chances. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, uh, no, <laughs> I'm going to wait until she moves. I'm not going to get hit. I'm going to keep my head down. I want to be able to come back next year. Mm-hmm. This is what happens when you record live, folks. Let's see. Oh, Let me get out of this. Oh, 
forgot I was still there. <laughs> Welcome to the world of tomorrow. Tomorrow. The world of tomorrow. Oh. In space. That's that. No, we're not. I'm going to probably read that. And, but not not now. Maybe next week. Bring that up. I want, when I know there are more. It's nothing against you, Randy. It's that. Uh, I know a few people that might be coming on next week, and they're a little bit more of a CW fan, so it's something to talk to them about. So, no worries there. Okay, and we've been on for uh, go close to two hours. Do you want to call it an episode? Yeah, I think we're good. It's been a it's okay. been a good talk so far. Okay, then therefore we shall. Uh, is there anything you want to? Uh, promote or anything else like that? Um, pretty much just all the normal stuff. Go to geekquoteorder.com if you want to find the site. Um, any social media, I'm going to be under Geek Quote Order. Uh, we've got the Facebook page, um, Instagram, Twitter. Those are the main ones I use, so if you want to connect on social media, those are your best bets. And to help Randy out, I will provide links to at least his main site, his Facebook page and at least his Instagram on our in our show notes. That way, if you visit our website, you'll be able to easily click them. And plus, I think a few others. I'll I'll share things around for once the show is posted, Randy. So and to help promote you and you being on the show. So uh, we we'll, after that, anything else? I think that's all I got for tonight. Okay, uh, again, we wish to thank Randy for being on the show, and we shall... And welcome back, Randy. If you were listening to this, again, if I cut anything out major that you were trying to say, I, I do deeply apologize. I was trying to listen very carefully in regards to not cutting out what you were saying, and for the most part, I got everything you said and all your agreements and laughter and all that. So there's that. And everybody, his links are in the direct, uh, in the description to his show. Again, you can find him on Facebook, which is uh, geek world order, uh, Twitter and Instagram are both geek world order. And his site website again is, if you didn't make it out, I'm sure you did. It was loud enough when I looked, heard it on medium volume it was geekworldordersite.com so be happy to go over there and read what he has to say and everything else it was a fun time to have him on the show so if you have any questions comments or anything else feel free to send them our way which is longcoatmafia at gmail.com you could also uh, visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the longcoatmafia podcast and you can leave us a message that way we do get back to you and uh, we do read our messages on the air if they're prudent to the episode because we do get uh, some podcast related uh, messages through our, our Facebook page so there's that now we do have a Instagram and Twitter handle uh, they are both Long Cope Mafia and while you're on all our social me- media just like Randy's uh, Geek World's Geek World Order social media please uh, like and follow both the show and Geek World Order, and we'll, it will be uh, fun to get the followers, especially uh, Geek World Order. Uh, our webpage link will be in the description because we don't have the followers yet to change it. So there's that. Uh, damn you, YouTube, for changing things like that. But as always, you could listen to all our back catalog and all our links to our social media and other uh, places to get our show uh, is the longcoatmafia.podbean.com and if you you could that site is great to listen to everything uh, yes you could download our episodes from the website to your mobile device but it's better off for your desktop or laptop if you use one which is great if you choose to listen to us that way but if you're constantly on the move we are available on itunes google play music stitcher radio 
and the Podbean app, plus Spotify, um, to all of us, to not from, let me say this, from all of us to all of you who follow us and subscribe to us on our social media and on the particular podcasting apps like Google Play Music, iTunes, and especially the Podbean app, thank you so much. Thank you. And please, again, listen, go back. If you're a new listener, go back to listen to our past uh, catalog to see what we did in the past because we have a lot of great episodes there not with a lot of great guests not just randy he is a great guest so that being said we'll see you next week and uh don't forget we do have our meetup on june 2nd at the library's pop culture show here in martinsburg if you're able to make it we'll be there at 10 a.m to maybe about three ish maybe depending on the traffic of the show we'll be there between three and till about three or four So there's that, and there are a lot of other stuff we'll be at, and soon as things are set in stone, we will let let you, our listener, uh, know when that's happening, where we'll be at through our social media. So, So please subscribe to our social media, and also we'll let you know through the episode. So take care, enjoy the movies that are coming out, and enjoy the movies that have been out. So... Tata, we are out. See you next time on the Long Coat Mafia.